Welcome back, everybody. So, um, just a quick recap of what has been happening lately. Uh, metaphorically speaking, uh, Nidhogg's corpse is, uh, still rather warm. And immediately afterwards, um, we've become... Experienced kind of like a drastic shift in the tone and direction of the story. So yeah, the Holy See has been up to kind of no good. They now have a body count. Needless to say, I am not very happy. At all. And I'm still kind of salty like that nobody in the city gives a shit that, you know, Nidhogg is just fucking dead. I mean, I know that's not our priorities anymore because they... Fucking Sir Zephyrin fucking just flat out goddamn murdered like the first close friend I ever really had who reached out to me when I was just a poor little lowly adventurer long before I became a warrior of light. He passed no judgment on me whatsoever. He's been nothing but kind to me and now he's kind of dead. And I'm very upset. Alright. Shorty pants. What are we gonna do? We've had our cock cocoa. We've had our marshmallows. What do we do now? We're down a member. Dude, I'm worried about everybody's well-being. Did you see how the count was just utterly just completely fucking broken? Like, jeez. Yeah, you all know what we're doing first, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, you knew. You've always known. Well, I don't know. Maybe they're drinking in celebration of Nidhogg's death. That seems like a perfectly good reason to celebrate and get drunk. Hello, sir. I wish you had a name. We would like to speak to your boss, please. It looks like he was, uh, roughed up a little, uh, pretty badly when, uh, we rescued him from the vault. Now, this is what- this is one of my favorite lines in the game. Cause holy shit. <laughs> Even though this uh, word has actually appeared before in um, in Stathasha Hard, swiving is literally an ancient word that l literally means the same thing as fuck. There's your obligatory f bomb in the game, guys. Hi, Lucia. Can we actually? No, no, Lucia. Would you fucking interact with me for once? Jesus Christ. You're like, hold up in this poor office, and no, I don't want to talk to you, I want to talk to you. My friends, I am in your debt. Your pug? Think nothing of it. The wounds are healing well, I trust. Some wounds do not heal. Right in the f oh god! Right in the f too soon, man. Too soon. The founding, the scriptures, a thousand years of lies, all to deceive the common man. Yeah, you tell him. Nay, our own brothers and sisters. For the blood of the Knights Twelve flows within all our veins. You knew this to be true. You knew, and you concealed it. I should be interested to hear how you came by this knowledge. But yes, you have the right of it. Wow, he's not denying it. Huh. The architects of Ishgard, King Thorden and his knights twelve, entrapped and butchered the great worm, Ratatoske, that they might partake of her eyes and thereby transcend their mortal limits. Upon learning of their treachery, Nidhogg was consumed with a murderous and justified rage, 
I dare say you know what followed. The Great Worm slew the King and half of his knights. Aye, but Nidhogg was subdued, and his eyes plucked from their sockets by the knights that remained. And they didn't even make sure the fucker was dead. Thanks for that, by the way. Their one mistake was to show mercy. For from his brother Hreisvelger did Nidhogg receive a new eye, thus rejuvenating his form and empowering him to embark upon an eternal quest for vengeance. Whilst Thordan's son Haldreth took one of Nidhogg's eyes and learned to wield its power in defense of his people. Thus was the first Azure Dragoon born, and ever since that time, his honored successors have risen to drive Nidhogg from our lands whenever the worm has returned to plague us. I ask you, my son, will you answer for my sins? Will your son and his son answer for me as well? What do you mean? If a man cannot atone for his sins in the course of his all too fleeting life, must his progeny then be held to account? Must every subsequent generation be judged as well? I think I know where you're going with this, Thordan. Thordan's betrayal of Ratatoska was an unconscionable, unforgivable sin. Should we then, as his descendants, meekly surrender ourselves to an eternity of punishment? Point taken, but considering you have perpetuated lie for a thousand years, you're hardly innocent yourself, and therefore haven't learned your goddamn lesson. Nay, say I. I would not see our children sacrificed in a vain attempt to appease an implacable foe. You're not appeasing him! Dragons are not like us, my son. To they who live forever, the wrongs of antiquity are as those of yesterday. No reparations shall ever suffice. This fact alone should serve as ample justification for our actions. Yet some refuse to see it as such. For men like you, who yearn to commit themselves to a nobler cause, a more compelling narrative is required. This is your solution. This is how you protect our people. You have given us a lost cause, a death sentence, with your compelling narrative. You but doom our countrymen to give their lives for a lie. Yeah, you tell that asshole. And they do so gladly. Highborn and lowborn alike are proud to serve, to fight and die for their country. And what would you say to them? What would you tell the wives who have lost their husbands? The mothers who have lost their sons? That their loved ones died for naught? You just freaking got done that telling him the people will die with honor for their fucking country! Don't feed me this sanctimonious shit! I... Uh... Over the course of a thousand years, Countless men have donned these robes, and every one of them came to accept the necessity of this solution. Once, I hoped you might come to accept it as well. Do not despair, my son. Soon I shall free us from the sins of antiquity. Hey, psst, psst. Maybe you didn't get the memo. Nidhogg is already fucking dead. And bring about the change you so fervently desire. Are we not going to address this part right here?
If he has spoken with others, I would have their names. Escort him to a cell and question him. Thoroughly. Your Eminence. So we want to explain this to uh, the other people present in the room because they don't know what the hell's going on. You saw something, did you not? A vision of the past. Estinia, will you please change your underwear over there? Jesus. So this is the power of the Echo. Would that it had shown you a finer moment from my past. Yeah, that's not really how it works, though. It was an exercise in futility, as you saw. Faced with the firmity of his conviction and his many ready rejoinders, my words deserted me. To be frank, I am embarrassed to recall it. A friend once impressed upon me the importance of differentiating between words, deeds, and beliefs. Were he here, I suspect he would judge your father's conviction to be no more than rank, self-serving delusion. Aw, there's the Alpha No I know! Even so, I cannot help but wonder what manner of change he intends to bring about. I have given some thought to that as well. During the battle within the vault, the Heaven's Ward demonstrated strange and unnatural abilities. Yeah, they, they, they kind of took a lot of steroids Aye, or something. The manner in which Sir Zephyrin struck down Lord Horshafon was unlike anything I've ever seen before. Ah, too soon, right in the fields. Oh, God, God damn it, guys. Jesus Christ. The spectacle called to mind King Thordon and his Knights Twelve as they are depicted in scripture. Holy powers and all. Well, they ate right at Tusker's eyes. Mere fabrications, which have become objects of faith, instilled with the belief of countless devoted souls. Seven hells! If Lady Iceheart can use her own body as a vessel for summoning, I see no reason why others could not. Fuck. Are the Heaven's Ward truly so reckless? No, 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 this is not happening. This is not happening. As they fled, my father spoke of Aziz La. Though I know not what he intends, I fear no good shall come of it. His ambitions are too great, and his minions too powerful. We must find the Heaven's Ward and stop my father before it is too late. Yes, yeah, so let us give chase, you know, like Mr. Count wanted, instead of sitting here smarving around in your office. Now the question is, where do we start? Uh, dude, we, we kind of live in your city now, like... I don't think you really need to, like, formally request our aid. We've been kind of doing this from the start. I mean, I'm glad you're being polite about it, but at the same time... Oh, I'll have his heart and I'll have his fucking head, too. We'll put it on a trophy right behind your wall behind there. Dude, they've been gone like a half an hour! Okay, well I guess that makes sense. 
I mean, Grant and his minions are gonna be pissed off that, uh, Nidog is kinda getting- Yes, I did kinda know that, but that was not the point of my ranting earlier. Please, please do! Come with us! Do something other than stand there! Be glad to have you with us! So, little quick summary, recaps, filling in, whatever. Will we ever actually, like, see the horde actually, well, what's left of it actually descending on Nishgard and committing assaults? No. No. That is only ever spoken of in dialogue. Limitations of the narrative, um, I'm willing to give it some leeway on that, but, but still, it's just kind of, just, out there. And plays no other importance on the rest of the narrative. Two, it does appear that... Sir Emmerich is, in fact, the Archbishop's son. And, um, obviously we wouldn't find out about this until much later in one of the anniversary tales. But one of the, uh, previous members of the Heaven's Ward is actually murdered by Order of Thornton, no less, simply by the crime of finding out that Thornton is consorting with the Asians, Even though, you know, he doesn't blow the whistle or anything like that. It's just, you know, he spies on it. And before he can even tell anybody, he's flat out killed. But it would seem by uh, that little story, it kind of vindicates what Lucia has said is true. That Thornton... The Seventh. God, why do they have to have so many different characters named the same damn thing? It makes it confusing. Was... They're probably most definitely hesitant to slay his own flesh and blood. Um, when this actually happened, um... And why, uh, the Archbishop has a son and publicly- well, not publicly, but... Openly acknowledges to, to, to them. And it is of obviously eventually, eventually even further back in the lore book revealed that Sir Emmerich does not know this and it's actually initially does not know this, rather, and it's one of his motivations for joining the Temple Knights in the first place. But it's never explained anywhere, number one, who's the mom? And number two, when did these rumors actually start floating about that have, you know, plagued him throughout his childhood or whatever? And when did the actual conversation for to confirm that they are daddy and son end up taking place? Because it's not, it's neither confirmed nor denied that it finally comes to 100% zero doubt truth right there in that in that flashback there. My implication is it was done sometimes before that, and they've just but neither of them have chosen to acknowledge it. But suddenly they just they just do. So yeah. So thirdly, and thankfully, Alphano, my old Alphano is back a little bit, and a lot of people ended up actually surprised by this later on because it's technically not a spoiler yes it is heavily implied that what Thornton and his his now cronies intend to do is basically summon a primal it's actually spelled out for you right here and there so do not be surprised to see that plan escalate because spoiler alert yeah it does but a lot of people seem to miss that even though it's flat out told you right there so, Lucia, what are we going to do now? Ah, okay. So, we've been tracking the air the airship that they uh that they went off on. Okay, and the little I just noticed just this right now, the little actually little button that indicates that there's another dialogue boss coming. There there's a stuck pixel in there. And it's not my TV, it's actually moving with it. Oh my god, I cannot unsee that now. Gee, I wonder where we could find a bunch of people. Gee! Gee, I wonder if we also have two tiny little airships that are possibly capable of doing this. 
I don't know, is the sea of clouds uh, drenched in enough wind to speck that aether or not? Gee, if only we just didn't have these devices around! Yes, let us go ask him. But yeah, I don't think the mana cutters are actually brought up again. Hi, Sid. Where are Biggs and Wedge? Well, we killed Nidhogg and... Yeah. We're down by one. But is it made of itty bitty living space? That's the question. Well, that didn't take much. We didn't need any air convincing. We should have just been like, hey, Sid, can we borrow the airship? And he would have been like, yeah, okay, thanks. Alright, shorty pants. I say we follow Sid. What say you? Oh, see, now we're gonna tell Tataru what the fuck we've been up to. No, 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 you're not going to Tataru without me. I am coming too. And you cannot stop me. This wall might be able to temporarily, but you will not. Okay, here's one of the scenes I've been waiting for this whole time. Tataru is indeed at the Forgotten Knight, and in a different outfit, as you can see, she is in a Weaver outfit. So she's getting sewing lessons over here. I've been waiting, this is one of the scenes I've actually been waiting for, because this is the one, one of the few that only, uh, it lasts for a very short amount of time, it's very easy to miss, and I actually missed it twice, um, before I finally saw it on my third alt. But considering what she did with Alphano's outfit, even though there's a couple weird pieces about it, um, she did a pretty damn good job with it, so I'm not sure why she needs to be more specialist at sewing than she actually is, but I suppose you can always have time to, in, uh, space with which to expand your knowledge of art, so. Hello, Biggs and Wedge! Thank you for the mana cutters. I have no idea what, uh, what the fuck we did with them, and that we will never speak them again. Maybe we, like, crashed them on our way back down. Maybe, like, when we were coming back from the airy, it's like, oh, shit, there's not enough wind to spec that either, and we just, like, crash them into the rocks. That would have been pretty funny. No, I'd like to talk to Sid. Sid, are you making fun of him for being late when he was trying to say goodbye to somebody? Uh, no, you and Tataru were not discussing anything. She was taking sewing lessons. Don't lie to me, young man. Um, hi. 
Not sure when you joined the team, but okay, whatever. Yes, we shall get going. We gotta find this bastard archbishop. No more time to dilly dally. Not at all. To the northern reaches of the Sea of Clouds, where countless isles yet remained uncharted. In search of a mysterious land known as Azizla, and the unmasked villain who sought to claim its secrets. Oblivious to the new threat which followed in their wake, they came. Alrighty, so now we are actually at the northern half of the Sea of Clouds over here. Where we now have access to the other Aether 8, which we will take care of just momentarily just as soon as I finish talking to everybody. Yeah, remember Bismarck is still fucking floating around here. Yeah. And surprisingly enough, Sid actually acknowledges it, which I find kind of hilarious. Well, they're kind of big and fat and everything, so I'm sure we'd see them coming from a mile away. Alright, so first thing we're going to do real quick is we're going to actually attune to the Aether right up here. But yes, now, well, we technically don't have full access to the zone just yet. We just freaking got here for crying out loud. But now we actually have... A chance to like pick up all the aether currents and whatever and actually finish you know kind of finish off this area again i really kind of hate that they don't make use of this early on and it's just pretty much just early plot expedition and character development for the count's sons who have pretty much remained absent from the story ever since which is kind of lame like why introduce them if you're not really going to take advantage of them they do later but it it takes them a while before they actually do that So technically, I'm not supposed to sh be in this part just yet. But again, we're just doing this for convenience sake. To to actually get to the damn Aetherite, so... Just, just pretend you never saw anything here at all. Nothing. This didn't happen yet. No, I want to actually get on my dang mount. Hey, thanks. There we go. Alright, so that's going to be it for now. And next time, we will actually, obviously, transcend to this village proper. And hopefully, we'll find out where the hell the Archbishop and his cronies went. And hopefully, put a stop to their plan. And hopefully, we can all get, not get harassed by that pesky primal who's still floating around in the middle of nowhere up here. So, thank you for watching, friends. And I shall see you next time.